All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Kale McCarr. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Kale. Um, to start, I guess, just how much did you feel like Gabriel Enniskog set the tone for you guys throughout the night? Um, yeah, no, I think he um, he's the captain for a reason. Um, I think he had a Gordie Howe hat trick. So, um, no, I think for us, um, that was a good tempo setter right away. And um, we might have got away from our game a little bit in the second period there, but um, we were able to find a way in the third. So, no, I think he, he definitely set the tempo. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Gail, only 7,700 some people in the building, but it sure seemed a lot more than that. Could you just talk about the atmosphere? Yeah, it felt like it was completely back, to be honest with you. Um, that was, uh, it was, it was pretty cool to, to come out to uh, that many amazing fans and um, just to, to have that amazing atmosphere again. Obviously, we had the 4,000 or whatever in, in the regular season, but to add a few, uh, a few thousand here for the playoffs is, uh, is pretty incredible. So, um, no, it's, uh, it's fun and hopefully they can keep showing up for us. Eric D, Mile High Sports. You, know, you guys had 50 shots on goal, out, uh, out shooting up by more than a two to one margin. Talk about the play you guys had today, and was that probably the best game you guys have played? This season? Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I still feel like we have better, um, but um, no, I think we we did a good job in terms of getting pucks to the net and um, allowing time for our forwards to get there. So I think that'll just be a key in the series, making sure that um, we're still getting those pucks through and we're we're battling to get to the net. So. Um, I mean, they do a good job sometimes, but uh, it, it'll just be, it'll come down to that for sure. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Kale, just, you know, heading into the second intermission, you guys are tied, but you seem to be doing everything right. Like how, how tough is it to stay patient, not get frustrated? And what's said there in that second intermission before coming out for the third? Yeah, just um, for us, just stick to it. Um, obviously, like I said, uh, a few questions ago, we kind of got off our game for um, a couple minutes there in the second. And I think for us, it's um, it just showed our resilience. We were able to kind of get back on track. And um, that quick one by Nate there, I'm, I'm sure gave an energy boost to a lot of guys on the bench. So um, he obviously Nate had an incredible game and Landy as well. And um, that top line was uh, motoring for us for sure. We'll take two more here for Kale, Brandon Crystal, KOA. Yeah, Kale, just how good was it to, uh, after you guys were peppering the net to find the back of the net to get the scoring started? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's going to come at some point if you just keep throwing pucks at the net and uh, crashing it. So, um, if, if yeah, if you're referring to the first goal there, it was, uh, it was a great play by um, by Miko in front, and uh, I was able to get that through, and Miko provided a great screen. So, um, yeah. Last one here, Peter Bach, The Athletic. I was actually going to ask about uh, kind of what you saw in that last play, um, or on the on your first goal. Um, I guess just what what did you see Bozak doing there, and kind of how did you try and get around him? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, like like them, we pre-scouted as well, and um, we knew that they were going to probably cut that. And um, I, I think I did that to them once before, and uh, who knows if it will be open. But I, I just think it shows our versatility as a power play. It's uh, regardless of kind of where we go off the face off and just try to create opportunity. But you no, know, back to that, it's just basically. I just kind of saw him turning and um, I was able to get it around him luckily and um, Miko made a great great play to get in front and um, that's why the puck went in so yeah. All right, thank you Kale. Thank you. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche captain Gabriel Landeskog. Mike Chambers Denver Post. Gordy how um, that's for a tough guy like you and a skilled player, I'm sure that that's uh, not a bad way to start the playoffs, you know, with the Gordie Howe hat trick and really help your team, not only in the fight, but in the uh, first two goals of the third period. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, um, playoffs is, you know, you start over, right? And, you know, your stats from the regular season don't matter. In fact, the postseason stats don't matter at all. Uh, for us, it's about wins and losses, and that's what it comes down to. And yeah, I'm happy I was able to contribute. Uh, but as a team, I thought we played a strong game. Um, a few periods, second period, towards the end of it, we kind of got away from our game. But um, I thought overall, third period was was really good, and everybody chipped in. Everybody played well. Peter Baugh, the Athletic. 
Hey, Gabe, what was your view on the on the Shen hit on Miko and how much of that was standing up for him and how much was kind of just trying to set a tone for the series? Yeah, obviously I'm going to stand up for my teammates and and uh, I don't I don't think the hit was that bad. Uh, you know, Miko I think tries to dodge him a little bit. He comes in and I don't think he put his knee out or anything. I don't think it was a dirty play, but um, I'm sure you know I kind of had a feeling that Shen was going to run a lot around a little bit in the first period and he's a physical player. He's a good player. Um, so just have to stand up with my teammates and obviously here playing at home. I thought our first 10 minutes of that period was a little bit, we were kind of tiptoeing our way into it a little bit, uh, some nerves and adrenaline and whatever. So, uh, I thought that was going to calm it down a little bit and, and get the crowd into it. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hi Gabe. I was going to ask, how do you, Keep yourself from not getting frustrated because Bennington was playing so well. I mean, 50 shots on goal. You guys are just peppering him. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's this time of year. It's about being strong uh, mentally and just being able to, you know, continue to do the things and uh, continue to play hard every shift. And, and uh, you know, we believe in what we're doing and, and we've run into hot goalies earlier in the year as well. And for us, it's just find a way, uh, you know, keep shooting the puck and it's not going to, it, it, you know, it's not going to start going in because you start overpassing or looking for the perfect play. You just got to keep throwing pucks there. And, and, and I thought we did a good job of that. And we got rewarded in the third. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Hey, Gabe. Um, you've never been reluctant to drop the gloves. Why do you think that's part of your role? And, and this team, as skilled as it is, sometimes a skilled team is regarded as soft. But you guys obviously are not. Yeah, your first part of the question. I don't. I, I mean, I moved over to play junior hockey at 16, and in, in uh, you know Kitchener in Ontario, and you know I started fighting a little bit a few times a year, and and uh, some people are gonna take this the wrong way, but I kind of enjoy it. Uh, standing up for my teammates, standing up for myself. I think it's a part of the game that um, you know it, it is what it is, and and in my opinion, it it's the way the game polices itself. And and for me, I don't go out there looking to fight but uh, stand up for myself and my teammates. And uh, I think us as a group, yeah, you're right. We're skilled and we're fast, but, um, you know, uh, I also think we're a tough team and we're a strong team physically. And um, th I thought we showed that tonight. We'll take three more here for Gabe. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Gabe, the crowd was seemed like a lot more than 42% of the building tonight. Uh, <laughs> felt like a full building. Uh, how much did the crowd make the difference to you guys maybe in that third period? And did it feel like it's just a different world after the last 15 months? Yeah, absolutely Ooh. amazing. You're right, Adrian. It felt like a, it felt almost sold out, to be honest with you. We came out there for warm-ups, and it was it, it felt half full already. And, and, and obviously the pom-poms and everything, it's a, it's a pretty special atmosphere to be able to come and, and call your place of work. So, um, you know, we're really enjoying playing in front of our fans again. We've missed them throughout that whole – uh, time that, that we weren't able to play in front of them. But um, so we want to keep going. We want to keep playing hard and, and uh, hopefully they can bring the same energy and, and, and same noise on Wednesday night and we'll bring the same energy us too. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Gabe, I know you said that the stats restart in the postseason, but is there a bit of a confidence inside knowing you guys haven't lost in this building since I think it was early March? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We feel confident at home, but uh, – you know, every game's a new game. And, and listen, we got to keep proving ourselves. We've got to keep uh, proving to ourselves and everybody else that we're, uh, you know, we deserve to be here and we deserve to, to keep moving forward. Um, for us, we don't listen to the outside noise. We don't listen to expectations from the outside. It, for us, it's one step at a time, one game at a time. And, and that's the way it's going to be for the next two months. You guys are going to be sick and tired of hearing me say it, but uh, we have to play that way and we have to approach it that way. Um, but having said that, we love playing here at home. I think uh, obviously the stats will show that. Last one here, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Okay, the chippy nature of the game was certainly not a surprise and even what happened there at the end in the corner uh, in the D zone. But in terms of Bennington skating from end to end and challenging Grubauer um, or whatever, perhaps he just wanted to talk to him, I don't know. What did you think of, of, of him skating end to end like that? He can do whatever he wants. It's not going to, 
he's not going to get to us. He's not going to get to Groovy. It is what it is. We, I'm sure he just wants to create some energy in this side of their locker room and uh, try to do what he can to fire those guys up, and that's fine. Um, it is what it is. We'll, we'll be ready Wednesday night. All right. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar, Lauren Jabbar, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, big first win for you guys. Just how much did, you know, Gabe and that top line kind of push you forward here in this one at home? Well, I thought they they got us started. They, they changed the momentum times in the second period, and they had a fantastic third period. They were making big plays all over the ice, both, both on the offensive side of things and on the defensive side. So huge impact in the game. I thought Gabe was, was outstanding. Um, leading the way r right away, even jumping in and getting involved physically when when uh, Miko took that hit. Um, so I, I thought they were really good in, in almost all aspects of the game. And then the atmosphere tonight, almost double what it was. Could you guys sense that on the bench, you know, coaching staff and players? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was noticeable right away. I thought the energy in the building was fantastic. Um, you know, we, we got used to playing without any fans and then, put in just over 4,000 and, and that was a, a great step forward. It seemed like we we're playing in front of a full building then and then to it's double like you just have to keep your mouth shut. Almost, almost double that now. I just felt like that was uh, that was a, a really good job. Um, it, it, it gave us a big boost tonight. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hi, Jared. I mean, I guess you're going to expect this in the playoffs, the kind of goaltending uh, that you were facing tonight. Bennington made some huge saves. I guess eventually you just warm down. Well, it took us a couple um, minutes in the in the game to get going. Uh, we had a turnover there, a good scoring chance. Um, then we started to come in, in the first period. I thought we were doing a nice job uh, creating some chances. We didn't make it uh, difficult enough on him in the second period for sure uh, as far as traffic goes. Uh, we, we created some good looks some good scoring opportunities, guys getting to the interior of the ice, but he was um, he was seeing them all the way uh, to the net. So we have to do a better job of getting in front of them, uh, creating some screens, tips, rebounds. And we talked about that pre-series. We talked about it after the first and the second. And then we got a nice one uh, from Gabe going to the net and getting a partial screen and the tip on, the, on the, the McKinnon shot. So we'll have to stick with it. We'll have to be better in that area. Um, even off the rush, though, he did make some some nice saves. I thought he was really good, as did our guy. We, we had a couple breakdowns on some turnovers, and Gruby came up with some big saves, I think a, a couple of them right away after we went ahead 2-1. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. On your second goal, the go-ahead the go -ahead goal, it looks like Landis Gog made a nice play to kind of dig the puck out before passing it to Brandon and then McKinnon. I guess, what did you see? How did that play develop in your eyes? Well, it started in our zone. I thought we made a nice play on the breakout, um, advanced the puck, and, and, and came, Miko came on to it and to give Gabe some support. So um, they were in the right areas of the ice. And then you, those battles, you, you know, they're going to try and take the, to bat, the battle to the boards in, in the D zone. And uh, Gabe did a nice job of, of getting it down low below the goal line to Miko. And, Miko did a nice job of getting over to help Gabe and give him some support and some talk. And, and then Nate just kind of moved into the right spot there. And, and uh, it happened quick, but it was a nice play right from uh, our goal line all the way to, to, to the end of it with, that ended in, the, in a goal. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Jared, what, if anything, do you tell your guys after game one about not letting the Blues chippiness get you guys out of the type of game that you want to play? Well, we talked about it even before the series and in intermissions and stuff. Like there, you, this is a physical game. It's played with passion. There's going to be some physicality to it. We we have to understand that. We have to embrace it. Um, we have to dish it out as well as take it. You got to stay disciplined. They have a lethal power play. Uh, I thought our PK did a nice job tonight. But you, especially when you get a lead like that in the third, and they were trying to scrum it up in. in you know, after every whistle, like we don't need to get involved in that. To me, that's just giving them opportunities to maybe pull some of our guys off the ice and whatnot. We have a 
game to win, and that's our focus. So it, it's going to take quite a bit of discipline here, but you got to play the right way between the drop of the puck and the whistle as well. We'll take three more here for Jared. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Jared, Ryan Graves, a uh, couple penalties tonight, but also two, I thought saved two goals. The one, uh, the diving stop was another great one. Uh, how do you assess Graves tonight uh, for you guys? I thought he struggled with the puck. Um, defended hard, did you know was really good against the rush, did a lot of a lot of things right, but they str- he struggled with the puck a little bit. Even the goal that um, that he had to dive back and save, I think that was his turnover over on the on the boards in the neutral zone regroup. He turned it up and I think shot it into uh, uh, Thomas maybe or Hoffman, and and that led to the scoring chance against. But great play coming back. So. Play without the puck and the defending part of it, I thought he was excellent. Uh, puck play will need to improve, though, for sure. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, your top three defensemen, Taze, McCarr, and Gerard, each played big minutes today. And obviously, these are guys that you're probably going to rely on for most of the playoffs. But just what were your thoughts on their game and, and uh, how important was it to have these guys step up in a game like this? Well, I thought they were good in a lot of areas. Um, uh, Kale probably wasn't his best puck moving uh, night in, in general, but they again a little bit like like Graves. I thought he was excellent in uh, in his defending details. Uh, he played physical, moved the puck better as the game went on, uh, for certain. The other two guys were solid. Uh, Kale just kind of has that that knack of, of making the right play at the right time in offensive situation and. Uh, none prettier than the, the play he makes on the power play right away to kind of juke the guy at the blue line and then a uh, great wrist shot from the point and gets a start on the, uh, you know, for the night. So um, he made a, he made a big impact for us and, and to eat those kind of minutes and play that way, I thought he was really good. We've seen him move the puck better though, for sure. Last one here, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, the top line was obviously fantastic tonight. What um I guess do you want to see from the the bottom three lines to, to kind of maybe get that secondary scoring going a little more? I mean, I don't know. It's one game, so I'm not worried. You know, I think we've got the secondary scoring all year. I thought the Joe line played great. Um, they were on pucks, tough to get through the neutral zone on. They were reloading and getting above the puck and doing the right things, even to the bitter end in the third period, getting up a sustained ozone time. The Kadri line had its moments. Uh, it'll come. It'll come. They just got to keep playing the right way. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you.